women in America have been fighting for their freedom. But you want to sympathize with some Ukrainians. Just getting about 13.13 billion, they say, coming over here. Start up a business. Get 100,000 off the rent. Get free housing. Get driver's license and help, help kids. You see what I'm saying? Never fought in one war. Like you so far think of. Never fought in the Civil War. Never fought in, in, in um, World War I. Never fought in World War II. Okay? Never fought in Vietnam. Never fought in the Korean War. Never fought one damn war. They're giving up 13 billion. Setting them up. Never gave you no technology. Never invented nothing really for you. All the inventions we gave you. Never gave you no music, no culture, where you made billions of dollars off. Zillions of dollars. But you're giving up 13.5 billion. You see what I'm saying? But this is the injustice of the so-called white man. Okay? But like his racist bastards, now they, they, they actually took, signing a bill, I think, in California today, but Negroes get reparations. They say in this sign, they gotta just, in California, they just gotta go down and see whose ancestral background it is. And you got white, he's just mad at that. <laughs> you got the white man that's mad at that. But you ain't mad at the Ukrainians giving up 13 billion. You're not mad at that, huh, white man? You're not mad at that. But you mad at the Negroes getting money. That shows who you are. Give me the money. Oh, How is Babylon become desolation? Babylon's gonna become desolation. That's why they're giving it up. They know that. They know that their time is running out. That's why they give it up money like that, crazy. But they know it's gonna be desolate. They know what's going on. And the elite is talking about going down. You know what I mean? They going to study that. Yeah, man. Now you want to spit right there, yeah. right, brother? What, what that mean, man? What that mean? You ain't, huh? You ain't spitting at the white man. How you spitting at the white man? Think those bugs. You know what I mean? Trying to make some kind of statement. Real. How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Come on. I have bled a snare for thee. He bled a snare for thee, man. Lord says he let us stand for Babylon. That's right. A lot of things goes get mad. They don't want to hear Babylon falling, man. They angry, they spitting. They don't want to hear that Babylon is falling, man. They hate the prophets. What you got for me, I? Well, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. Yeah, read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. Okay. And I will set my face against you. The Lord said what? And I will set my face against you. The Lord said he was going to set his face against us. Come on. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. The church right there. We shall be slain before our enemies. Read on. They that hate you. They that love you. They that hate you. The white man love you. They that hate you. China love you. They that hate you. The love you. They, they that, that hate, hate you. you. African man. They, they that, that hate, hate you. you. All these nations hate you, including the white man. Read on. Shall reign over you. He's gonna reign over you. And all these nations reign over you. And the white man is setting up his Ukraine brother to come over here and give him a hundred thousand. He's gonna reign it to your neighborhood. Uh, start abusing your women. But those are Nazis. Uh, start sleeping with your women, raping your women, talking all down to the old ladies. No respect, because they don't respect black people. And when they get that hundred thousand, they coming in and setting business right in that neighborhood, and it's the same thing like the Korean. No respect for black. People. No respect. No respect. It's worse than Rodney Dangerfield. Right. It's <laughs> not <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield no got no respect. No, the black man gets no respect. Right. Not Rodney Dangerfield. The black man gets no respect by nobody. But guess what? He's gonna flip it up in his last name. Read out Second Chronicles. This is the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, verse 16. Come on. But they mock the messengers of God. All we doing is teaching this Bible. 
Negroes are spitting, Negroes is angry. Who right. are we doing is teaching this Bible. But they mock us. And we were saying, hallelujah, Jesus love you, my brother. Everybody can come into the kingdom. You, the white man, love everybody. You want to be spitting and being angry. You hate us. Pray. And despise his word. And you despise his word. Because we tell you to get right. We tell you you can't commit adultery with your brother's wife. Uh, a woman that you were scheming on. We tell you that's wrong. Stop smoking weed. Stop defiling your soul. We tell you all these things. You angry at us. You mad at us. You despise us. Read on. And misuse his prophets. And you misuse your prophet from that from the back then to, to now. You always misuse God's prophet. Then at the end you pay for it. That's what the book of Ezekiel said. They tell them whether they will hear or forbid, but they should know a prophet has been among them. Right, so bring it out. Yeah, you won't pay for it. Free. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. Until the wrath. So the prophets warned you, and we told you that you despised us and you fucked us until that wrath came. Then you started crying. Then you started looking for us. When that wrath came, but that wrath is coming again. And we're telling you it's coming. Read that again, brother, from the top. This is the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, from 16. Read it up. But they mock the messengers of God. They mock the messengers of God. We write, we write where we belong. They go spit and they go angry. That's where we belong. Because this is what this truth is going to bring out. They're not going to like you. They're going to hate you. Everywhere you go, I think it's all clubhouse, they the problem. Everywhere you go, because they don't want to hear this word, man. That's right. Read on. And despise his word. And they despise his word. You don't really want to hear what God says. You don't want to hear the truth of God. Read on. And misuse his prophets. And misuse his prophets. Read on. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. Until the wrath. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. See that? But everybody gonna have to bow down to Judah, man. Everybody hates Judah. Everybody gonna have to bow down to that Negro, man. Yeah. He's gonna be praised because he sets the tone for everything. Whether they believe it or not, they follow Judah, man. They follow Judah in everything. Bob Marley, he followed the temptations. A lot of people don't know that. God. You see what I'm saying? They follow Judah. At any level, they're going to have to bow down, even though they hate that, man. The own people hate that, the old tribe. West Indians hate Judah. They say Yankee boy lazy. Sibby, Ephraim, Levi. They all speak hot against Judah, but they're going to have to bow down to Judah. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. And Judah's right there in the hands of the, of the neck of his enemies. In the government, in the structure. You think Adam is friends with you, man. Adam is all over in, in, in these parties with this damn white man. <laughs> Getting all type of money in his charity events and all that. He's right in the pocket and he's open with it. He's like open with it. Adam ain't for you, man. Adam's is not for you, man. Adam's is white man got him more and so that nigga the white man is the one that put him in there the white man put him in there and he'll tell him that too boy that them niggas ain't get you here i got you here boy whatever i say you do you don't forget who got you here who made you make was it those niggas on that corner was those niggas in the street that made you nail boy you know who made you make <laughs> yeah, right. I know they true hits. They treat them bad. People don't understand that, really. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. But see, thy father's children will bow down to Judah, man. Give me all the second right. Twelve and seven, man. They gonna bow down to Judah, man. You see what I'm saying? I know, cause I, I you know what I mean. I, I'm a Benjamite, but I, I lived among Judah. Everybody perceived me as a Judah. 
I get I get the, the respect that you pick it. But people can automatically take me for a Jew guy. Unless I start talking Benjamin for them. They believe I'm, I'm Judah. So I feel what it is to be a Judah. So I know the disrespect that they get. Kind. Okay, read. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 7. Read it out. The Most High also shall save the tents of Judah first. Yeah, the Most High will save the tents of Judah first. So who really established it in the beginning? It was the of Judah. Yeah. The elders was Judah. Yeah. They the ones that really came out and brought this truth down. It was the Judites. They said they're going to save the tents of Judah. They're going to save Judah and the tents which is Benjamin and Levi. Around Read on. Come on. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that's why I know. So that's going back to Genesis 49. They're going to bow down. 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 they are going to bow down 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 they are going to bow
plan in this, man, to get rid of us, but it ain't gonna work, man. We don't. And the chief captains. Come on. And the mighty men. All the men, all the men of war. Everybody's gonna be rounded up. We don't. And every bond man. And every bond man, come on. And every free man. And every free man, we don't. Hid themselves in the dens. Hid themselves in the dens when this great war is coming, man. When this battle of Armageddon. And when the Lord brings destruction on this earth. Everybody is going to be trying to hide, but you're not going to escape. That's why you see Russia going into Ukraine. There's going to be China going into Taiwan. Right. And you're going to have Pakistan invading um, India. Right. And you're going to have North Korea invading South Korea. And you're going to have Iraq and Iran coming together against Israel. Now the war is getting ready to start, man. And the end is going to be on again. Read on. And in the rocks of the mountains. And they hid themselves in the rocks of the mountains. Come on. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. Fall on us. Come on. And hide us. And hide us. Come on. From the face of him. Come on. That sit up on the throne. On the throne. And from and the wrath. Of the land. From the wrath of that land that's going to come. That tells you the Lord coming with blood. Uh, okay. Give me Revelation 19 and 10. The Lord coming with, with a sword and destruction. You give me all Matthew 10 and 34. Okay. Great. This is the book of Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do, do it not. I, I am the thy fellow, thy fellow. I, I am the fellow servant and of the brother that have the testimony of Jesus. They have the testimony of the spirit of Jesus. Come on. Worship God. Come on. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of Okay, these old hollering prosperity preachers, they ain't bringing out no prophecy. Right! They ain't bringing out nothing about Russia, nothing about Ukraine. They ain't bringing out nothing. They only teach us about money. Money. They want to hear about Ukraine. They want to hear about how much you got in your account, brother. Talk about that. I saw they ain't bringing out prophecy because they don't know prophecy. See, that's been hidden from them. Give me Amos 3 and 7. That's been hidden from them. They don't know prophecy. They can't bring out prophecy. They don't know prophecy. You go to these cats and you ask them, break down Revelation 13. These can't do it. Scratching their head, man. Can't do it. They be going into a storm. The dragon. <laughs> that dragon. They be talking. For, they don't know it. They talk for 10 minutes about <laughs> the dragon. <laughs> What is that dragon? The word of God. Tove. Is that I need dragon? You. Well, I need Tove for a minute. Okay, that's what they be telling you. Well, let me get the charger. They won't be knowing about the problem. Read on. Okay, Matthew 10 and 34. Here, give me that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Come on. Think not that I am come to send peace the Lord said on earth. Don't even think that. They can't come to set peace. That's a heavy statement right there. Read that again, brother. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to set peace on earth. Come on, say, don't even think it, man. But you didn't even think that I'm coming to send peace, man. You disrespect it. And don't even have that in your thought. Uh, and I'm coming to send peace. Uh, I'm coming to send peace for what? Who did it? Come on. The prophet. The prophet. There's a reward for going out here, man. 
There's a reward for going out here. You got rewarded and you don't even know it. If I wasn't in this truth, I would have took a vaccine shot. I would have took a vaccine shot. I wouldn't have known no better. I wouldn't have wanted to save my job. You get rewards and you don't even know it, man. Having this knowledge, really. And to the saints. And to the saints, come on. And them that fear thy name. And them that fear thy name, come on. Small and great. Small and great, come on. And so this destroy the which destroy the earth. So the white man did what? Destroy Small them. and great. So destroy them. Come on. Come on, brother. Destroy them which destroy the earth. Destroy them which destroy the earth. Oh, that's what we get. Oh, 5,000 species of animals dead, dead under the white man's rulership, man. And now the cheetahs is dying out. Right. Does this idiot want to go over there and shoot the cheetahs and put, put their head in his house like a damn trophy? See, when we hunted animals, it was to survive. It wasn't like this goddamn white man just hunting animals and just killing them. We got the whales coming out of the water because the water is so damn polluted. Rather killing themselves. Because he polluted the water, he destroyed the ozone layer, he destroyed the animals, he defiled the earth, man. This is him, man. This ain't nobody else. Nobody else have destroyed the earth the way the white man has destroyed the earth. Nobody else. You can't check it in history. That's why when he came over, the Native Americans told you about destroying the buffalo, man. They saw that this man was a beast. They told him about destroying the buffalo. This is what he do. He's a destroyer of the earth. And he's going to pay for it. The Lord says he's going to get hit. Him that have destroyed his own earth. Man. So our people need to get back and come back to the Lord. Uh, they got to understand what time we in, man. Uh, Give me um, Romans 13 and 11. Now is our time to wake up, man. All that drinks. Right, come on. To awake out of sleep. To do what? To awake out of sleep. Come on. For now is our salvation. For now is our salvation. Come on. Nearer than we than when we believe. Now is our salvation. And now is our time to wake out of sleep. Come out of your sleep, man. Come out of your sleep. Now is our time. Okay? Shave her hair, whichever one. But 
And Chris Rock, you know, there was a bad joke, whatever the case may be. But the point being, the stuff we do to each other, we would not do to the white man. And even though he apologized, he so-called apologized, but he would have never did that to an either my comedian. Uh, All right, read it again, brother. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. Go ahead. So that the man that is tender among you. Man, one time we had respect for one another. Now that could have been handled, that could have been handled better on both their behalf. You know, well, uh, Chris Rock could have said, well, she got a medical condition. I'm not going to make fun of her. I'm not going to kill her. And that's it. She got a medical condition. Even though the rules with comedians is there's no hoes why. With a comedian, there's no hoes why. You know, comedians talk about dead people. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be all comedy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but Chris Rock could have took the high road and said, no, nah, I'm not going to joke on her. She got a medical condition. Or Will Smith... Will Smith could have hollered at him and said, listen, yo, my wife is, you know, she's sick. Yeah, they claim Chris Rock didn't know, or until they claim. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people claim they didn't know that Jada Pinkett know. was sick. They think they just shaved their head. Because yeah. she's an adulterous lesbian anyway. Right. And I'll get on that in a minute. You know what I'm saying? She's, she's a, she was uh, recently, I follow uh, Queen Latifah's show. And she was recently on Queen Latifah. She was on an episode of Queen Latifah's show. And uh, she was just diked out on the episode, man. She played some kind of thief. She played like some thief chick in the episode, but she was all diked out in the episode. So it's like, okay, you may have a medical condition, but that's just an excuse to shave your damn head and put on a man persona anyway. But if they claim Chris Rock didn't know or whatever the case may be, but Will Smith could have said, listen, brother, you know, my wife had a medical condition. That was kind of a bad joke. Just watch that act because you know, I know it's comedy, but you know, at the same time, my wife got a medical condition. That's why she had to shave her head. Or well, that's why you know her hair is falling out or whatever the case may be. All right, read it again, brother. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. Go ahead. So that the man that is tender among you Go ahead. and very delicate, Go ahead. his eye shall be evil towards his brother. And why do I have the brother keep reading the scripture and repeating it? You know why? Because we as a people, the stuff we do to each other, we will not do to the damn white man in the other nations. You won't do it with a damn 10 foot pole. That's right. Well, because your eye is in. Now you decide to defend your wife's honor. Now you decide when the woman on their red table talk told you in your face she committed adultery on you in your house. Right. She got in a damn entanglement. Yeah, his rod got entangled in your damn mouth. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what he 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 his his damn you know what got entangled all in your damn lips and jaws. I don't mean to get graphic, y'all, but that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Read it again, brother. So like yeah, that's a that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54. Go ahead. So that the man that is tender among you. So where we were respectful and loved each other at one time. Go ahead. And very delicate. And we knew how to deal with each other as brothers, and we knew proper conflict resolution. That's the problem. You niggas don't know conflict resolution. I done spoke on that many times. I done did whole classes and lessons on that. Proper conflict resolution. Right, go ahead. His eye shall be evil towards his brother. And you know, Will Smith, he, he thought about it. That nigga would have never did that. That nigga would have never did that to a, a Michael Jai White. That many, he wouldn't have did that to a, a 50. He would have did that to a Shaquille O'Neal. He wouldn't even did that to some of the other comedians that's about that life. He sized up Chris Rock and, you know, Chris Rock is, you know, I met Chris Rock in person. He's, you know, he ain't really about that life like that. He's, Chris Rock is really a comedian. You meet that, I mean, you see that cat, I've seen him two or three times. He's always in funny mode. That's just, he doesn't, I, I met him in Harlem person. I was like, what's up, man? How you doing? He's in front of Sylvia's chick chat a little bit. You know, but I ain't want to act like I was all starstruck, so I just said a few words to the brother and kept it. Matter of fact, he spoke to me first. He's like, hey, what's up, brother? I said, hey, he was just out there talking to the people, chilling. He had his uh, Range Rover out there in front of Sylvia's, just chilling. Yeah. But, you know, he, he a cool dude, laid back dude. He's a comedian, he's a funny dude. So, well, the niggas pick their battles too, man. <laughs> niggas know, we don't know he couldn't do that to a certain cat. He could just walk, he couldn't even do that to Denzel. Denzel is about that life on the low. He could have gone up there and just smack Denzel. Nah. Right, go ahead. <laughs> he couldn't even do that to damn uh, uh, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, big, big, six foot something nigga. You know what I'm saying? So you wouldn't have did that to the average cat. You know what I mean? I just want to say before I read it, he laughed at the joke. Right, right. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. He thought that was funny. We're going to get to that too, right? Go ahead. And 
his eyes shall be evil towards his brother Go ahead. and towards the wife of his bosom Go ahead. and towards the remnant of his children which he shall leave. And the remnant of his children which he shall leave. And Jada and uh, Will, they spiritually left their children. They left their children out for Hollywood to devour them. Look at the uh both of their children said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna subject myself to a gender. I'm, I'm whatever I want to be. And Will Smith and Jada said, that's them. Let them do what they want. They can do what they want. This nigga going to practically cut off his rod one day, and Will Smith going to say that, hey, 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 I don't tell him what he has to do. Give me our Proverbs 30 and 20. Of okay, our Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20. So you want to smack your brother over a joke, but you niggas don't know how to defend. And you black women, some of you black women are simple as hell. Yeah. Ooh, he defended his woman. Ooh, he defended her. And even if you don't shut your dumb ass up, you got to know when is the proper time for the man to defend your honor. And like I said, if that's the case, you got to go out. Why Will Smith ain't going around smacking everybody? A lot of people done talked about. They had all kinds of jokes on uh, uh, Jada when she talked that entanglement stuff. So you would have to go and snuff and smack everybody. everybody. All right, read, brother. Proverbs 30 and 20. Read. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 20. Go ahead. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Um, unless such is the way of an adulterous woman. Did you smack the hell out of Jada on live TV when she told you she sucked another man's rod in your house? Did you do that? Right, come on. She eateth and wipeth her mouth. Oh, she eateth. The scriptures is cold, man. The scriptures is cold, man. Damn the most I don't play. Read that again, brother. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Go ahead. She eateth and wipeth her mouth. She eateth and wipeth her mouth, right? In this man's house. That's like, um, that's like... <laughs> Yo, the scriptures is graphic. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger, man. Right, like, like, like Jake, like we said, we had a joke back in East New York. He said, you see, your, your, your chick is foul, yo. She gonna go, she gonna do you know what to the next man, wash off her mouth, and then come back and kiss you and tell you she love you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go ahead, read, read, read. The scriptures don't, the scriptures don't play, all right? So read it again. This is Proverbs 30 and 20 from yeah, the top. Yeah. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Go ahead. She eateth and wipeth her mouth. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and tell your mother on national TV. Go ahead. And saith, I have done no wickedness. I have done no wickedness. Because what happened is uh, when Jada talked about the entanglement, she blamed it on Will. She blamed it on Will Smith. But if that was the case, just divorce the man and move oh. on. Don't sleep with another dude in oh, your same house. That's cool, if that's the case, just get a divorce and move on. You want that same August dude? Now, if you if you if you divorce or you like Jake saying the world break up or you're not together no more, that's different. But don't sleep with the man in the man's house. We got into an entanglement. Well, while the man was somewhere filming them, whatever movie, you know what I'm saying? He he was filming a a Hancock pause. <laughs> No homo, no pun, in, no pun intended. But a man was filming Hancock. You know what I'm saying? You was in a house handling some cock. Come on, man. Let's, I mean, let's keep it real, man. Not to get graphic, but it is what it is. So did you slap Jada when she said that to you live on Red Table Talk? Come on, man. Go ahead. For three things, the earth is the question. That's it on that. Go ahead. Bring it up. No, no. You're right, Doc, because she said all said that she was looking for the man, somebody to handle her good, like she made something she said to that effect, she ain't never been handled good in a while, right, and stuff right. like that, and she right. went to this young, young dude, She man. went to the young dude, then. That's yeah, right. that's that cougar spirit, yeah, yeah, because Will Smith, uh, uh, Jada Pinkett is what they call, she's Will Smith's beard, yeah. we know he's a big ass Hollywood homo, oh, and yeah. you know, that nigga's in six degrees of separation spread all over the place, you know, since shut up. All right, yeah. so you know, uh, Shalom, brother, right? So you know, it sees what they call his fear. A lot of times, these, these homo ass niggas, they just get married as a fuck. And, and she's what you call, uh, 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 I forgot what they call it for the females, because she's a, she go both ways. She, she said it on Oprah. She was like, well, if it don't work out with Will, me and Will fighting to work it out, I, I'm gonna I'm I'm give Ellen a call or something. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres, husband oh, lesbian, eat a white nasty ass. Crazy. Yeah, she said that live on, I, I believe she was on Oprah, and she said, if it don't work out with me and Will, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Ellen a call. 
right, I'm gonna switch teams. Yeah, you don't get like that anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, she was she was on um look at Latifah show, the, the equalizer. Latifah got Latifah show is pretty good too. They be going into current events and stuff on it. Stuff really yeah. going on in the world, yeah. Okay. It's called the equalizer. It's the feet and she's the um like um, Denzel made the movie. They made a series out of it, Latifah stars in it. I think it's That's episode Yeah, it's on that it's on uh it, well you got the fire stick, you can get it. Yeah. Right? But um or Roku TV, whatever. If you can look at it, good, I'll put it in and it'll come up. Yeah. But anyway, I think it's episode 10 or 11 that Jada, uh, season two, episode 10 or 11, Jada Pinkett's in. And she's all diked out in an episode, man. All manly and diked out. So, you know, the, the, the point being is, my only thing is, you know, that's Will and his business. That's him and his wife. If they got through their issues, whatever the case may be, whatever, you know, yeah, whatever. You tried to work it out, you know, that's a... Uh, that's a hard thing for uh, a man to forgive a woman for, you know what I'm saying? But okay, let's say hypothetically speaking, they work with their problems. Okay, me and my wife gonna work it out. We going she slipped up and let this dude slip up in her because she didn't get handled right in a while. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, okay, that's their business. That's between them. But pick your battles, man. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you pick your battles and Jake, you gotta know when to stand up. Did you rebuke her in front of a live audience on TV and say, listen, no matter how you was feeling, that's adultery because you still married to me and you slept with this August nigga? But you should have manned up right there. Pick, you know, pick the right battles, Jake. Don't, be, don't, don't, don't go do more nigga shit. Go up there and do more nigga shit and just go smack your brother. You know what I'm saying? It's the, why you ain't mad up to say, no, listen. You know, if somebody on Red Table Talk, go give me a King James Version black. Give me Leviticus 20 and 10. That's what Will should have did. All right, yo, somebody go get me a King James Version Bible. You got what? You entangled what with August? Yo, somebody give me a scripture. Read Leviticus 20 and 10, brother. Yeah, Leviticus 20 and 10, yeah. They should have sat, man. Pick your battles the right way, man. Right, don't go up there. That's just still nigga shit in front of billions of, in front of the whole world. All that is is a black man smacking another black man. That's so that ain't nothing but black on black violence again. They go and we don't give a damn about the other nations, but the Japanese man gonna say, "See the problem in America, mm -hmm. the nigga." The white man gonna say, "Told you these niggas just can't get along." They violent. But the East Indian man gonna say, "This nigga, nigga always fight each other." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Look how much money they got. Nigga fight each other. Violent. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter twenty, verse ten. God. And the man that committed of adultery. God. With another man's wife. Man, did you even smack August? Did you smack August when he slept with your wife in your own room? Hell, at least uh, uh, my man, my man Stevie J, he spouts out on faith. Yeah, he, he spouts yeah. out on faith and cursed her out yeah. after faith slept with a dude in their home. Well, yeah. You know, say so at least at least the man did that. But yeah. you gonna go smack Chris Rock? But you sit there all cool and calm. When, now we don't know what the man might have did behind the scenes. He might have spouts on the behind scenes. But still, you want to do something live in front of everybody, pull the script out on Jada when she admits it. Read that, brother. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. Go ahead. And the man that committed adultery Go ahead. with another man's wife. And that young brother, you know, he like, you know these young boys, I'm going to hit that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if that's Will, I don't care if that's Will wife, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to smash her up in the crib. Yeah. And he probably went and bragged about it. Yeah, yeah. Because they yeah. said he made songs about it. Yeah. They said the man made, I don't know who this dude is, I never heard his music. They said he went and made songs about Jada after the whole fight. So did you slap him, Will? Right, go ahead. Even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife. Go ahead. The adulterer. The adulterer, go ahead. And the adulteress. Come on. Shall surely be put to death. See that? You lucky Will Smith ain't come home and blow both of y'all brains out. You know what I'm saying? Now that would have been picking your battle. That would have been stepping up. Right? Yeah. You know, so you you so-called black women, oh my God, I want my man to defend me like that. No, you want your husband and your man to defend you at the right times uh -huh. for the proper causes. Yeah. It's it's ten times worse stuff that Will Smith could have defended. Or if that's the case, you have to go around to every comedian or everybody that says something, all the media, everything, and smack the hell out of everybody. Every last one of them. But you're going to pick on your brother Chris Rock. You know what I'm saying? Sucker-ish, man. So it all, it all... It all comes back to nigga ish, man. Yeah. It call, all comes back to nigga shit, man. That's what you should have did. Did you pull this scripture out on Jada? 
right when she committed adultery and and and, and brag of boasting about it in front of you on national TV, oh. I got into an entanglement with August. Damn. All right, give me on the pocket for give me Sabac twenty six, and I'll start at uh, twelve. Oh. Sabac twenty six and twelve. Oh. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? And you niggas love hype, man. Oh. Even in Israel, man. Oh, he smoked the shit out of him, yo. You know what I'm saying? 50 people sending me the damn story. <laughs> you love hype, man. Oh, there's a bot. We waiting for your breakdown on this. There's no breakdown, man. There's one nigga shit. What is that a breakdown? There's no deep breakdown. What am I going to I'm going to go to Daniels 11 on this? There's no deep breakdown. It's one nigga shit. That's all it is. All right, read what you got, brother. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus. Now, not... Excuse my language, Israel. We, you know, I personally normally try not to curse when I teach. Read, brothers. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, a.k.a. Syrac, chapter 26, verse 12. Go ahead. She will open her mouth. The Lord says she will open her mouth. Go ahead. As a thirsty traveler. As a thirsty traveler. And get into an entanglement with August. That might be why the Most High jacked up and got her sick. Because she committed adultery. So the Most High jacked your ass up and made you sick. Right, come on. When you have found a fountain. When you have found a fountain. You know what a thirsty traveler would do when they found a fountain? But she said she wasn't done right in a while. So she fed that young boy and she probably just went crazy in the bedroom. She was like a thirsty traveler. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Oh, read. She oh, she, they say they thirst. She eat him and drink him and wipe him her mouth. All right, probably did all kinds of sexual stuff to that young boy, man. All right, read it again, brother. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26 verse 12. Yes, I like it, Israel, but we got to keep it real, man. Not, not to get so graphic or, you know, vivid, but it is what it is. All right, come on. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. And that's a woman to do that, too. If a woman, if they feel sexually frustrated or they not feel like they're not getting satisfied by their husband at home, they'll be like a thirsty traveler. Right? So they're, they're like a thirsty traveler. What, uh, like Paul said, it's better to marry than to burn. Right? Like, like uh, a person, if you haven't had sex for a while, you become thirsty. You become thirsty. <laughs> so, so men and women are thirsty. Right? Go ahead. Right? When he has Oh, oh. Right, we well, have found the fire. That sexual frustration builds up. The first rod that woman sees, she gonna jump on. All right, come on. And drink of every water near her. And drink of every water near her. Any any cat that fits the criteria will do. The first cat that come on to her or seduce her, she gonna lay with her. Oh. All right, come on. By every hedge will she sit down. The Lord said, by every hedge will she sit down. Go ahead. And open her quiver. And open her quiver. Come on. Against every arrow. Against every arrow, man. As soon as a rod come along, she'll jump right on. It. She'll hop right on. It. So my point, I say all that to say, how come Will didn't rebuke her publicly like he smacked Chris Rock publicly when she committed adultery? Pick your battles right, black man. Go and don't come with this nonsense. I see uh, women and 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 just just regular posts on. Post in general, so who he defended his wife. Oh God. Give me Ephesians 5 and 25. There's a right cause to defend your wife for though. There's a right time to defend your wife. Now I'm not saying, listen, okay, the brother got pissed off. Don't joke about my wife. She got a medical condition, whatever the case may be. But you know, he could have went about it. He could have, you know, talked to Chris Rock in the back. I'm interested. If Chris Rock sincerely didn't know. If he sincerely didn't know, then you step to the man. Yo, I didn't know, man. My bad, man. Maybe if Chris Rock would have knew, he would have told the joke. So as many ways that could have been handled and dealt with, man. Read what you got, brother. This is the book of the, of the Ephesians. Chris Rock probably thinking, yeah, the, the, the chick just shaved the damn head off. Yeah. So I'm going to make some G.I. Jane jokes on her. Right? Go ahead. This is Ephesians 5 and 25. Come on. Husbands, love your wife. So yeah, part of loving your wife is defending her and protecting her. In, in, a, in a right sense, you take a nigga head off for your wife. Yes, yeah, you oh. take a crack on anybody. You defend, yes, in a right scenario, the right battle, you do defend your wife. You smack a nigga, punch a nigga, shoot a nigga, beat a nigga ass, or hell, a nigga got more skill than you, you take the ass off the wife. Hey, man, I'm trying to fight for you. You know what I'm saying? At least I tried to fight for my wife. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Even as a Masiak, yeah, I was shy. Also love the church. The Lord said, husbands love your wives like 
Yahweh shall love the church. Come on. And gave himself for it. And he gave himself for the church. So yes, in some instances, if you got to defend your wife, your children, your family, you may have to give your life. You know what I'm saying? Even um, that brother, man, L.L. Uh, uh, Cool J. L.L. Cool J said when that homeless Edomite broke into his house, oh. the man said, yo, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I just went into action oh. because my wife and children was right. I had to defend them. Oh. L.L. don't know if that Edomite could have had a gun and shot him. But he used his, he used, you know, he L -L always worked out and he trains a little bit, so he used his skill and he was able to subdue the Edomite. But the man said, I just went into action to defend my family. But L don't know. He didn't cow in the corner and say, baby, you call the police. You know, well, you go down there. With, 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 you go down there and get him. Nah. The man ran into action and said, yo, I have to defend my family and myself. But lucky that the, the cracker didn't have a gun or nothing because he could have just straight shot L L and, you know, the man could have died trying to protect him, himself and his family, his wife and his children. All right, read it again. Ephesians 5, 25. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25. Go ahead. Husbands. Love your wife. So my point being again is there is there is a proper time to defend your wife and your family, your children, defend yourself. All right, go ahead. Even as Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, also loved the church. Just like Yahweh Shai loved the church. Come on. And gave himself for it. And what did Yahweh Shai do? He gave his life for the nation of Israel. So just likewise, a man, a man, man, I know instances where Brothers lost their lives defending their wives and their family in righteousness. They truly had to defend them, but in protecting their wife and family, a lot of times that's how their wife and family got away because the husband jumped in front and was like, I got to protect my family. Right, go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water go ahead. by the word. So my, my point being, man, you know, the brother Will, he, he did humble himself. Give me that first Peter 5 and 6. He did humble himself and apologize and you know, Chris Rock says some words. So, you know, okay, that kind of makes up for it. But at the end of the day, it's just more nigga shit, man. He ain't apologize for it. Right, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He, he says some, some statement about, he says some statement about violence is not good and some nonsense. You know what I'm saying? But read what you got, brother. This is the book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 6. Go ahead. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Most High. Now, what the men should do is have a, if they haven't done it already, I don't know. I'm not a fly on the wall. They should have a conversation, you know, squash it, and then publicly say, yo, we good, we squashed it. You know, I'm gonna let Chris smack the hell back out of me, and then we gonna be even up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, squash it, but that's what it, that's what it takes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think Chris Ross was like, nah, I'm good. This is whatever, you know what I'm saying? He went out with his team. I took that L, you know what I'm saying? Read on. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Most High. So now all the men can really do is humble themselves. You know, Chris could say, yo, if it was a bad joke, I offended you. I apologize to you and Jada. And, you know, Will could say, yo, you know, I shouldn't have reacted. I should have, I should have had more discipline. I shouldn't have reacted like that. It's just more violence against another black man. It's just making us look bad again as a people. Yo, my bad. You know, we gonna amend it. Now let's make a movie together. A conscious movie, too. Not no fight. You know what I'm saying? You know, stuff like that, you know, to make it better. All the men can do is go for themselves in this way. All right, read on. That he may exalt you in due time. Now what? That he may exalt you. That me exalt you, come on. In due time. That the most high may exalt you in due time. Somebody was calling. Uh, yeah. All right? So he may exalt you in due time. So that's all you can do is humble yourself. So, you know, Israel, man, stop getting so caught up with the sensationalism. And, oh, yo, he swept the dude out of him, yo. You know what I'm saying? Let, really look at that stuff for what it is, man. And at the end of the day, it's just more nigger-ish. That's all it is. It's just more nigger stuff, man. And we don't need that more as a people, man. We need to be built up as a nation, man. All right, we need to catch, uh, we need to, uh, give me, um, uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 5. We need to stop the folly, man. Stop exalting the folly. Because at the end of the day, that's all folly, man. And there's always, always something weird happening at the Oscars, man. There's always some kind of weirdo stuff. Yeah, there's all, all, all kinds of weirdo stuff uh, uh, at, the, um, um, at the Oscars, man. Give me, uh, before you get that, give me uh, Proverbs 12, 26. They broke, uh, they broke my man from, uh, uh, what's his name, Wesley. 
time was against this, this devil. He was against this system. He was training brothers down in Edenton, Georgia, next to Dr. York's land. He was training brothers down there. He, on, or the, the word on the low was, he was training brothers for the race war. He disguised it as a security company. He said he was training brothers on how to do security so they can open their own security businesses. But the, on the low, he was getting ready for this cracker, man. Right, read what you got, King. This is That's the where they came, Salaki. That's where they came after him. And they shut it down and they got him on that tax evasion. And then they just broke the nigga and said, look, you want to get back in Hollywood? Come on back. We're going to buck break your ass. All right, that's when he came back with Brooklyn's finest and he started slowly working his way back in. Now they got him buck break. Brokeback Mountain, brother. Coming out. Huh? Brokeback Mountain. Coming out. Starving Red. Yeah, Brokeback Mountain Part 2. Starving Red. They broke the man. And Esau loves that, man. Just like the brother. What's the brother? Um... The brother from uh, Goody Mark, the short, fat brother. CeeLo. Um, CeeLo, right? CeeLo, he was talking all that New World Order, Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that peeking in my window? Yeah. Why, you know, they was one of the first rappers to mention the New World Order. Yeah. Goody Mark. I used to love Goody Mark back when they first came out. They broke CeeLo, man. They got that nigga in a dress at the Super Bowl talking about, does that make me crazy? Yeah, nigga, you crazy. But they love to do They love to get the rebellious nigga internal, man. Flavor Flame. They just, just put him on Flavor of Love and bumped him on out. When he was with uh, 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 Public Enemy, they was fighting the power. Yeah, duck man! You know what I'm saying? Right here. Right with the big clock on his damn chest. But at least he was with Public Enemy. They was against the system. But they let it take them niggas and buck break them. Be what you got, man. This is the book of Proverbs. Nice, man. The man looked like, the man went from Blade to damn Cinderella, man. The man looked like Tinker, man. Just, just effeminized the brother, man. And he a black nigga, so, mm. you know. <laughs> you know, normally, dark brothers, let's, let's keep, dark brothers usually look, look rougher, you know what I'm saying? The dark brother, the more darker brothers, you know, they look rougher. See, that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody was scared of the black nigga around the place, you know what I'm saying? The, the darker you were, the more niggas will scare you. That black nigga don't play with you. They called him black. They called him black, yeah. Every nigga told complexion or darker was black. That nigga was naked black. That nigga was black. Yo, black, yo, black. You know what I'm saying? Right? Some nigga was so dark. Some niggas got nicknamed blue black. Yo, that go blue black, yo. Big dark nigga coming through. Everybody scared of this black nigga, man. You know, triple black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And so Wesley's a black nigga, man. And look at all, all feminized out, man. You know the... Dark brothers using the rougher, man. Yeah, and yeah, he probably got AIDS up his ass and all that, man. Yeah, he probably got AIDS or whatever. Three weeks back, man. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 12. So like it is, but I know tonight's session is a little raw, but it is what it is, man. No holds barred, no holds barred. Read, brother. Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 6. 20, 26. Read. Right, Pro Proverbs 12, 26, man. Right? This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 12, verse 26. Go ahead. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The Lord said the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Go ahead. But the way of the wicked. And the way of the wicked, come on. Seduce with them. They done, he done got seduced, man. And, and see, once you, once you, when a black man go on that red carpet, it's a rap man. When they put them niggas on a red carpet, it's a rap man. You end up coming out there like Billy Porter. His, his damn is feminized ass, man. Very Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar, right? Oscar don't have a rod. Yeah. Right? Read, pause, no homo. 
Read. Proverbs 12, Read. verse 26. Come on. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Right, so we are a righteous nation. Why? Right? Because we was given the law, statutes, and commandments. And we're more excellent than our neighbors. God. But the way of the wicked. The way of the wicked, come on. Seduce of them. So you get up in our Hollywood, they so seduce you, man. The hell with the Oscars, man. You niggas go up there and, and uh, what was the other brother? He got an award, an Oscar final, and it was sick. It was private. I think uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel, ja I think Samuel Jackson got his first Oscar, but the ceremony was private. They didn't even publicize it, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Samuel. Yeah, nigga, we gonna give you the first Oscar, but it's gonna be a private ceremony. What the hell is going on, man? Yeah, because they got a, uh, hey, Shalom, they got a, a secret, uh, they got a, a, a black award show that's really not televised. That they just like the black celebrities come together and, and do for themselves. But they ain't really televised about it. Because the Oscars shut everything down. We still trying to get this white man's approval, man. We still trying to get this devil's approval. But then they give you an award, just like they did uh, Denzel. The man had to be uh, that, that wicked cop, that wicked cop. Just like they did um, um, Cuba Gooden Jr., he had to be a cool. Show me the money. Tom. You don't say I had to be a coon to Tom Cruise. Tom. There is, is a Halle Berry. She had to be a slut, a smut in a war. Tom. She had to get turned out by Billy Bob Thornton. Tom. A lot of people think Monsters he was really Monsters hitting Ball. that on the set. That when they when they do that on um, Monsters Ball, they said that that looked real. That was a damn porno. They wasn't even acting. They said hey. half sex for real, and we just gonna film it. Hey, they did it to own Lisa Bonet. Yeah, man. Cosby was mad at Angel Hall. Yeah, the angel for real. Make yeah, sexed up for real. Yeah. Then Holly, uh, uh, she pulled out her titties on Swordfish. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, okay, Hollywood done smutted you out. Now you can get the Oscar. You know what I'm saying? And and the word is yeah. I think it was Samuel. They they gave him a damn Oscar in a secret. Uh, and the, the ceremony wasn't even public. Look, nigga, we gonna reward you. You done put in all this work. Yeah, Samuel done been in so many goddamn movies, man. And now, look, you know, okay, we'll give it to you, but that's trying to meet Esau's approval, man. That's all it is. You know, you're trying to meet this devil's approval. But she ain't nothing but your damn enemy, man. You black, Latino, Native American, and Seminole Indian, you should have your own resonation of people. Yeah, you should have your own, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, yeah, even with that, man, that, that uh, Dave Dash was up there talking like a boss, and that dude Shannon Sharp. That guy, man, he's a big... God, give me a Proverbs 17, 15, Spank man. me. Spank me, Will. Yeah, man. <laughs> man so, so, you, so you just want your own? You ain't trying to work for nobody? Yes, brother. That's what the man said. What he said. You know, and I share this sharp dude is off, man. Big barbecue baby back rib nigga, man. <laughs> right, what you got, brother? Please. <laughs> this is the book of Proverbs, <laughs> chapter 17, verse 15. Good. He that justifieth the wicked. So you want your own? You telling me you want your own? Because you niggas, you, you just so used to not, you so used to depending on master. When when a brother like Dave, and Dave Dash was up there straight talking like a boss. He said, why should you wear somebody else's clothes when you can wear your own? Why should you work for somebody else when you can work for yourself? All right, go ahead. He that justifieth the wicked. Even like some, like some uh, so-called African-American, so-called Judite, and different, even different tribes, entrepreneurs, they'll tell you, if you do work for somebody, always think like a boss. Think, yo, I want to be supervisor. After supervisor, I want to be manager. After manager, I want to be, I want to get up there with the damn board of directors. After that, I want to, I want stock in the company. After that, I want to start my own company. Always think, you coming in as a beginning worker, think like a boss. Even, even regular uh, financial advisors tell you that. You know what I'm saying? But no, you mean to tell me you want to have your own? He don't say nothing, brother. That shit shop is off, man. Yeah. That guy is off, man. But Dave was just talking like a straight boss. I could not interview. I was like, because Dave was he was kicking some game, but Shannon Sharp was just cooning, man. No. I read, brother. Reed. And he that condemneth the just. And Lord said, he that condemneth the just. Come on. Even they both. Even they both. Go ahead. Are abomination. That's an abomination to the Lord, man. To right to the Most High. You, you, you condemn the righteous, and you, you know, you um, justify the wicked, and you condemn the just, man. That's an abomination to the Lord. Stop fooling, nigga. Stop getting up there and playing that damn fiddle for the damn white man all the time. That's all you want to do. And fight for the right cause. You know what I'm saying? If if Will Smith was sincerely defending his woman, okay, fine. But. Pick and choose your battles the right way. 
Right. That's all we saying, man. Don't get up there and make yourself a damn spectacle for the damn white man and the other nations to be mocked and ridiculed, man. You know what I'm saying? Not, like I said, not that, because I'm a stickler for that. Not that we shouldn't do anything because the white man looking at us. Now, I don't give a damn what Esau think or feel. You can do everything perfect. He's still going to hate your black guys. But let's do it because it's right in the most high your house shot according to the laws and let's treat our nation the right way, man. That's all, that's all we got to do, man. I was in Harlem uh, last, well, last night, the night before. I was in Harlem, not last night, in a restaurant and just trying to grab a bite to eat before I went home. And I, I just come in a restaurant, mind of my business. I just come in a restaurant. I'm looking at the food that they got on display, see what I want. And a black woman just grabs her bags and I said, God damn. I said, wait a minute, am I dirty? Do I stink? Not that I give a damn, even. Nobody's thinking about your ratchet ass. But it's just the hatred we have for our people and from our own women. Sis, I'm just in here to try to get some food. But just the thought of a nigga standing next to her, and she didn't have a mask or nothing on like she was scared of COVID. It's just a, a black man standing next right. to me. He just picked up bags up and she had some bags like she went shopping. You know, she had some stuff like she went shopping. Right. Again, you think I'm gonna grab your bags or something? Uh, uh, in Harlem? Yeah, Harlem. Yeah, it's in a, uh, in a, 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 a Simeon uh, restaurant. Yeah. And I'm like, it's such like, I start to say sus. I'm not, I start to say I'm not thinking about your ratchet ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm in here to look at the food. I just, she like standing with Tobin's out. I'm standing here looking at the food. She's, Simeon's taking her order, talking to her. I'm looking at the food. And she turns and looks to me. I said, damn. And then when I, I, she, I guess she had to do a double take. I guess she, the spirit humbled her like, oh, the brother just in here getting food, getting whatever, you know. I ain't no big scary looking nigga. It's little old me. So what the hell? So I guess she got comfortable. Then she came next to me and to pay for her food. I'm like, oh, now you are relaxed and comfortable. And now ain't that something when it's time to pay for your food, whatever. You Now you can come all up next to me. Just the hatred of our people, man. And just that initial, you know, you just see another black man or another, it's just automatically on a defensive. I'm not thinking about you. I'm trying to get some damn food and go home. You know what I'm saying? But that's how people are, man. That's self-hatred, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, read on and uh, go back to Deuteronomy 28 Good. and uh, 56. Because the, the hatred would be from the women, too. Not, a, not only the brothers, but the women, too. And it would be the, the man against the one. And see what it is, too? In, in a slight defense to Eve, a lot of times they be bitter because they be getting mistreated by these jakes. They be having bad relationships. They see shit growing up. They father party was off or whatever the case may be. So they got that black man ain't ish syndrome. So, you know, they just got a natural hatred towards you and they on a natural defensive because, because of trauma. What's that I'm um, saying? Hurt people, hurt people. You know, the, the woman damn near look like she would have turned around and said, the fuck you standing next to me for? You know what I'm saying? Because hurt people hurt people. And I'm like, sis, I'm not thinking about you. I'm definitely not trying to holler. I don't give a damn how good you look, what you got on, how many shopping bags you got, oh, she got money, she went, I don't give a damn about none of that. I can care less than two hells about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of you women are stuck on yourselves anyway, thinking every nigga trying to holler at you. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the hatred of our people, man. Read what you got, brother. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 56. Go ahead. The tender and delicate woman among you, Go ahead. which would not adventure to set the sole of her feet upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Come on. Her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom. Right, and, and when it says the husband of her bosom, that also means just the men of her nation in general. A lot of times the woman's eye is evil towards you. And I've been in many incidents like that. Eva looked at, look at you like you the damn Grim Reaper. And I'm like, damn, I'm just a, another so-called black man trying to mind my business. You the most evil nigga on the earth, and a lot of that is trauma. But look, sis, I'm sorry, I didn't do it to you. I'm right. running my business, you know what I'm saying, leaving minds alone. Right. I'm not trying to holler at you, I don't want your number, I don't care how good you look, how fly you think you are, I'm minding my business. Right. But that's how it is with our people, man. Jump back up to 54. God. Read that again. God. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. Go ahead. So that the man that is tender among you Go ahead. and very delicate, Come on. his eye shall be evil towards his brother. So going back to, to the Will and goddamn Chris incident, 
this I will be evil towards his brother, man. So everybody want to know the smack, the slap, the infamous slap. Elder, what's your breakdown on that? We want to hear your input, Elder. Right? Right, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My input is more nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? Stop sensationalizing everything, Israel. Because it, really, it ain't really that deep. It ain't really that deep. You know what I'm saying? You, you got people saying the damn slap was fake. You know what I'm saying? It was, they said it was an Oscar ritual. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got the uh you got the tin four hat. You gotta put the tin four hat on. You know what I'm saying? They they said is every that well they claim every year there has to be some kind of ritual at the Oscars. So that's why every year at the Oscars you see something weird. So they claim, you know, they're conspiracy theorists, they always throw something out there. They say every year you can always count on something weird happening at the Oscars because a lot of it is rituals. Now I don't know, I'm not looking that deep into it. It's just niggas smacking niggas to me over stupidity. It's just niggas slapping niggas, but you never know. You never know. You know, I'm not, I'm not uh, negating anything when it comes to Esau. Esau does. They do weirdo stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Just, just say, look, niggas, go up there and smack each other so the, <laughs> the world can just look at y'all as you can't get along. You know what I'm saying? I've Black been, men. I've been a party she went to. It was an inside thing. She had dick everywhere. Right. Well, Jake has said. Jake has spoken. All right, brother. Jake has spoken. All right. I don't know. The brother said maybe we had. It wasn't no goddamn hit. That's bullshit. Right. Maybe the, the brother said maybe they had Jada dressed up like G.I. Jane at a secret party. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jake, Jake got Jake got Jake got his breakdown. <laughs> Y'all want to hear Elvis Black breakdown? Jake got his breakdown. Right? Give it up for Jake and his breakdown. Jake got his breakdown. <laughs> Blood talk, yeah. Right, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, Jake's breakdown. Jake got his breakdown of the incident. So I don't know, man. Once again, you know, not to be repetitious, but I, I chalked that up to just more nigga shit, man. You know what I'm saying? More, more, more niggerism. And um, it just got to, you know, we got to stop just, just being a damn, a stereotype in front of the whole earth, man. That's what it basically comes down to. Look at you niggas, man. All you niggas are about is violence against each other. Which, you know, everybody, you know, everybody does that. Edomites get in public fights, you know, other nations, you know. They always, they always want to, they want to embellish it when it comes to us, you know what I'm saying? The slap heard around the world, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which it was, that's the Oscars. So that damn thing will go down in history. Even Chris Rock laughed and said, it's the biggest night in television history. You know what I'm saying? But either way, more nigger-ish. Go ahead, bring it up. No, I'm just saying, they, they, all type of jokes they had. Back then too. Remember when Chris Rock was in New Jack City with the bike? Oh yeah. <laughs> he had the face. Yeah. <laughs> After he got smacked. Yeah, God. Then you had uh, <laughs> Avenger Mike. Avenger Mike. Flip the whole thing. Went, 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 walking up. And they walked way out the water. Right, right. <laughs> Pulled out his gun. <laughs> <laughs> Will went back to his seat. Good, good. They making a joke out of it. They making a joke out of it. They sensationalizing it. You know what I'm saying? So. Either way, man, you it's know, um, too. huh? Yes, you see the media, a lot of people now are coming out saying that they didn't like the fact that we did that. Right. So, so, so Esau is kind of like turning on them. Yeah, they, you know, uh, Esau will do that. Esau will take a take a star dude, and then any chance yeah, they yeah. get to pull him down or to break him down, yeah. they'll do that. And, and they don't they don't care about they don't care about uh they don't care about um what he did to Chris. It's like, don't bring that nigga stuff to the Oscars. That is, that's for, don't bring that nigga stuff. Yeah, don't bring that nigga stuff to the Oscars. Now, now I'm gonna hit you with something, right? I'm gonna go deep. Now here's an excuse for them to gentrify the Oscars. You and me, we gonna stop allowing you niggas in here. You know what I'm saying? Cause the Oscars already been racist. Right. So now here's an excuse for them to slowly but surely stop pushing blacks out of the Oscars more and more. Because what happened is, remember, um, 
I think Jada was the one that was complaining about that. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, her, that's why some conspiracy theorists, they are bringing out certain things. They said, wait a minute, how is it that she's the one that complained about the Oscars, then the incident happened with her? You were the one boycotting the Oscars, but you and your husband came up here with the nigga behavior. Right. See that, so you never know. You gotta, it, you look deep. You put the tin for hat on, but you never know. You never know. You know what I'm saying? It could be a coincidence, but you never know. You know what I'm saying? This thing goes deep. But at the end of the day, all that stuff is folly, man. Mm. Please ask these tin and five. Yeah, we never got it. Please ask these tin and five. We won't get you wide again. More, more nigga shit. Excuse my language. Bring it out. So yes. Yeah, yeah, they said it was an all black cast, like an all black. It was all black casted. Uh -huh. Like the the uh the, the Grammys yesterday. Grammys? Like yeah. Yeah. See that? Yeah, they said uh Denzel and uh and Tyler Perry was comforting him. They said Will was crying backstage. And yeah. They had to yeah Tyler Perry and and, and uh, Denzel had to comfort him. And, the, the, the word is that Will was acting real weird the whole night. They said the man, he broke down with the, um, with the uh, King, the King Richard thing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Which, that, that was a good movie. Yeah, Will did it. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, that movie was real good. Yeah, I, I watched it twice, man. I, well, I, when, as soon as it first, when it first premiered, I watched it. Yeah, when it first premiered, I watched it. And then uh, I watched it again. I watched it twice already. Good movie. Good movie. He, he did uh, Richard Williams real good. He did. But um, they said the man, the reports is coming out that Will was just weird the whole night. It was kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? But you say you never know, man. Read what you got, King. This is the book Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 5. Bring it out. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Go ahead. Folly is set in great dignity. Yeah, that's what's going on, man. Folly is set in great dignity. Extreme high dignity. Good. And the rich. And the what? And the rich. And the rich, come on. Sit in low places. The rich sit in low places. Good. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants. So Esau's the servant that's up on the horse. Now we, we don't want no foolishness going on with you. You niggas fighting again? Come on now. We, we, we're both up. We're going to take you out the house. We're going to put you back in the field. Come on, nigga. You got to go back to be in the field, nigga, because you don't know how to act in the house. All right, good. And princes walking as servants. And princes walking as servants. Go ahead. Upon the earth. Upon the earth, man. We are the princes running around like servants, running around like lesser beings on the earth. So now Esau up oh, here's an excuse. Put the niggas back in the field. They don't know how to act when we let them in the house. He can't be a house nigga no more. Put them back. Put them back. 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 Back to being a field nigga. Can't let you in the house no more. They're gonna take this opportunity, man. They're gonna say, okay, Jada. Okay, Jada. You. And yo, give me um um Galatians six and seven. You and your you were the one boycotting the Oscars. Right. Now your husband, you niggas are the ones that mess it up for black people. Now you can't come because you come here with nigger behavior. Yeah. yeah, man, mockery. He saw it turning around and flipping on him now. Galatians six and seven. This is the book of Galatians, chapter six, verse seven. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Go ahead. The Most High is not mocked. You can't mock the Most High. Go ahead. For whatsoever a man so. So now, Jada, you was making this whole thing about the Oscars ain't black enough, and they don't treat us right, and it's racism. Boycott the Oscars. Now Esau can mock you and say, your nigga husband is the one that messed it up for you. Now we're going to start putting, we're going to put y'all back out in the field. We let you niggas up in the house because you was complaining, that wench. Now we putting you back in the field. Come on. For whatsoever a man so that. Shall he also reap? So you complained about the Oscars, Jada? Now he saw that, okay, you ain't gotta be here now, negress. Right, so you know, it means our people, man. Right, read on. For he that sow to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. Right, you want Esau approval so bad. You want to be accepted by Esau so bad. Boy, I got the Oscars because they're racist. All right, Jada, we'll let you and your Negro husband sit in the front and make a spectacle out of you. Now this nigga gonna get mad, smack Chris Rock, and we gonna boycott all you niggas. Right, go ahead. Well, he that so now, now we gonna boycott. Now, now the Oscars is gonna boycott niggas. Right, go ahead. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit go ahead. reap life everlasting. Right, see that? You shall reap life everlasting. Oscars right. Looking into it, right, yeah, you know, you, I'm going to hit you with something. 
this, they gonna make Esau. E even if this was a stage, Esau gonna run with this. And the white man's an opportunist. Oh. So he's gonna kill a hundred. He's gonna kill a hundred birds with this one stone. He's gonna kill two hundred birds with this one stone. Esau is an opportunist. Esau gonna grab this and he gonna milk it like a damn cow. He gonna get every ounce of damn milk out of this cow. Esau's an opportunist. If they, even if this thing wasn't a setup or whatever, they called it, they said, um, conspiracy theorists, they say uh, it's a possibility it could be. Well, they say it is. I, I say possibly because I don't know. You know, they said they said it's uh, what you call a humiliation ritual. They call it in a, in a secret society. Yeah, the secret society. They call it a humiliation ritual. I'm doing the research on it. Uh, one brother sent me a video and I was looking into a few other things myself. They call it a humiliation ritual, all right? They said, when you're in Hollywood, that's part of the ritual. You gotta, you gotta have one, at least one time of public humiliation. Because Esau's a weirdo, man. Like, for whatever reason, but they call it, they said they, it's part of a humiliation ritual. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is a term in the dark, in the secret society, but... It remains to be seen, or it was just nigga ish. He just smacked the hell out of Chris Rock because he got emotional. Either way, it happened. Esau gonna run with it. You better believe that. You better believe that. So, give me uh, uh, Mark 115. Get up out of here on that. What does all this mean, Israel? Leave all this folly and stupidity alone and come back to the laws of the Most High. The Oscars don't give a damn about you. The world don't give a damn about you because you smacked the hell out of your brother. They don't really care. They're going to run with it. Now, niggas, this summer, niggas going to be saying, yeah, I will Smith that thing. Okay. <laughs> well, I will hear sound. I will Smith that thing. What? You know what I'm saying? I will Smith that thing. I can see Snoop that guy's Jake doing that. Snoop that guy's Jake doing that. Snoop that guy's Jake doing that. Got all kinds of damn rituals and, and, and uh, seances and different public and secret that they do in our Hollywood. All right, read what you got, kid. This is the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. And saying, The time is fulfilled. The Lord said, The time is fulfilled. Go ahead. And the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. And the Lord said, The kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Go ahead. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So all of this just comes full circle. Everybody worried about slapping. You no know, slap heard around the world and the world famous slapping. Whatever. It's just more nigga ish, man. That's all it is. At the end of the day, Israel, repent and keep the commandments. The hell is the Oscars? Because it's destroying you. They done buck broke my man, Wesley, man. I like Wesley, man. Blade, all that, the martial arts, man. Man, man, fierce, man. Right, like, yeah. Uh, uh, Wesley's Benjamin too, man. Bad man. Oh, yeah, bad man, Benjamin. yeah. Bad man with the martial arts man. Benjamin. And they just buck broke the man. Buck broke the man, uh, Wesley. Man. So the Oscars, the hell with the Oscars, man. Repent and keep the commandments. Good. But once again, for the 99th, 9,000, 10,000th and 10th time, <laughs> that, that slap, <laughs> you just chalk it up. That's just more nigga shit. Right, that's it, right? Repent, keep the commandments, come back to the Most High your house, Shah, and let's seek the kingdom. Let's seek unity and love as a people. Come and let's seek the kingdom. Ba -shim ba -shim so with that definite instruction to Esau and the nations, power, peace, safety, and the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel, tomorrow sundown is the new year. 
Happy New Brew Year to the nation of Israel. Everybody bring in a new year of spirit, of righteousness, and truth. And we'll be live with a, a new moon, new year service tomorrow, about 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Everybody tune in and have a happy uh, new year. According to our true Hebrew calendar, March 31st, sundown at even. Come la shala. Come la shala. Come la shala. Come la shala. All praises. All praises. All praises. Yeah. Shalom, Israel. Come la shala. We still got next. Hallelujah. All praises to you. How when you have a shy? Hope you enjoyed the live camp from Brooklyn, New York City. Uh, we out here in the elements. Um, if you learn one thing tonight, we've done our job. All things are for the upliftment of Israel by Shema Mashiach Yavashai. Salakia, y'all. Tonight was kind of raw, but we had to take it there. These Oscars is, is, is destroying our people. All right, repent and keep the commandments. Love y'all, Israel. Happy New Brew Year. Ashar Kadashana. That's a happy new year in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Have a blessed new year. If you celebrate it already, it's all good. Whatever date you got, we're not here to argue about dates. Happy New Brew Year, whenever you celebrate it. Kwame Shalom. Shalom.